My name is Bob Serginar, and I spent my entire career as a cop trying to catch bad guys. From my start as a patrol officer perusing the streets of my city to a detective investigating crimes against persons and property, I spent every working hour protecting the innocent from the offender. I'm sure most of you have seen these stupid television commercials promoting the campaign all over the country by law enforcement called Click It or Ticket. Hey, Ray. How's it going? Great. So you pulled me over. You forgot to use your turn signal back there. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll give you a warning. Just watch it next time. Yeah, I will. Uh, hey, you still going to the game on Friday? You betcha. Oh, uh, what are you writing? A ticket. <laughs> For what? For not wearing your safety belt. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> Afraid not. See you Friday. We're stepping up safety belt enforcement. If you don't buckle up, you will get a ticket. No exceptions. Click it or ticket. What in the world is that all about? Hey, thanks a lot for the break on the turn signal violation out in the middle of nowhere. Guess who's gone to the game alone? During the years I spent on the road, I was involved in high-speed chases, pull robbers out of their cars at gunpoint. Get out of the truck! Get out of the truck! Get out of the truck! Put your hands over your head! I arrested thousands of dangerous drunk drivers, so drunk they couldn't even recite the alphabet. Uh, can you recite the alphabet for me as fast as you can without singing it? A, B, C, D, E, F, D, E, H, A, E, E, G, H, M, E. I don't know it very well. Okay, well, I'll try it again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, E, A, D, E, S, F, D. <clears throat> I never okay, you know the alphabet? I dealt on a daily basis with nutcases that endangered the public. He says, all you need to do is sign it. You'll get it signed, okay? Mm -hmm. But did you hear me ask him nicely the first time? Sign the ticket. Okay. Here is my signature, and I will tell you why it's this way. There's my signature, and here you are, sir, and there's your bullets, and there's your gun, and the first time I said specify where the people are that I endanger. Do you understand? You're very Okay, clear. you endangered people in, in the... I am leaving now. I, you got your signature. No, you got to get your copy of the citation. Send it Watch to it, me Bob. at my first address. Get out of the car. Get no, out of the no, car. No, no, no. Get out get of the car. No, sir. Get out of the car. No, sir. You're under arrest. No, I'm not. I didn't hesitate to write a red light violation. Why? Because not obeying that law could hurt an innocent person. I even wrote stop sign violations. Realize what you did wrong back there? No. You didn't stop for the stop sign. I stopped. I was often accused of being cold-hearted to lawbreakers. Present address. I thought you didn't give pretty girl a ticket. Pardon me? I thought you didn't give a pretty girl a ticket. You didn't think we gave pretty girls tickets? You're absolutely right. We don't. Sign here. In the detective bureau, 
I investigated everything from theft to murder. Soon after the victim was shot, she staggered to United Dairy Farmers, where she died within minutes. When she stumbled in the door uh, next door, she said, I've been shot. And then when she collapsed, she said, please don't let me die. As the woman lay dying, the suspect fled the scene. But, but during my entire career, I never, never, ever wrote a seatbelt ticket. Why? Because my job was to protect the innocent from the bad guy, not to protect the innocent from themselves. Seatbelt laws for adults are in the same category as those stupid mandatory bicycle helmet laws. And don't try telling me that bicycle helmets save lives. You've been duped. I did extensive research using the law enforcement computer to gather accident statistics. I spent hours with the local hospital's emergency room doctors searching the medical database to determine how many bicycle accidents resulted in head injuries. The result? Only two one hundredths of one percent of all bicycle accidents result in serious head injuries. That's one serious head injury in every 5,000 bike accidents. Is that enough to make it mandatory to wear those stupid looking helmets while you ride your bike? No. But maybe you should wear elbow guards because 9% of all bicycle accidents result in elbow injuries. I've got an idea. Why don't we just pass a law that you're not allowed to leave your home unless you're wearing your red man protective suit. If an adult wants to drive their car without a seatbelt, more power to him. If I respond to an accident and had to pull some bozo off the hood of his car because he wasn't wearing a seatbelt, I figured, oh well, he knew. As long as what he hit was a stationary object and not a family in a station wagon coming the other direction, it wasn't my job as a cop to protect you from yourself. If you punch someone else in the face, I'll come after you. Punch yourself in the face? I couldn't care less. If we continue in the direction we're headed, we'll have cops stationed at McDonald's to write fat people tickets when they buy a Big Mac, or at the liquor store when an alcoholic buys a six pack, or the convenience store when anyone buys a pack of cigarettes. Where does it stop? Hey you, you're going to hurt yourself if you do that. You're under arrest. This stupid seatbelt law was drawn up by a bunch of touchy-feely, do-gooding liberals who think it's their job to be your mama. These are the same pinheads who, if they could, would have a whole army of brown shirts across the country protecting people against themselves. And they'd have their seatbelt division. Instead of radar guns, they'd have binoculars peering down from overpasses and radioing ahead to the seatbelt violation pursuit car. All right, radio, we have the seatbelt violator in sight. We're going to stop him right now and make sure that he puts his seatbelt on. There you go, buddy. Well, you think you can get away with not wearing your seatbelt? Uh, okay, put it on there, friend. And there would be mandatory jail sentences where they would lock you up for at least one week to make sure you didn't hurt yourself. And the fine you would have to pay would pay the salaries of those people at the suicide hotline. And I'd run them differently also. Hello, Suicide Hotline. Hey, before you get started, let me give you two rules. One, if you decide to jump, please don't hit anybody when you land. And two, have enough cash in your pocket to pay for the service department to scrape you off the pavement and pay the cop who has to write the report. And consider that what you are doing is incredibly selfish. You are thinking of yourself and none of the loved ones who care for you. Think about that on your way down. And if you're not sure where you're going when you die, I'd reconsider. Have part of a great day. I'll take some heat for my opinion, but I'm not worried about what the liberals think of my opinion. I'm used to taking the heat. I wrote a book about giving your kid a good whack when he talks back, and that drew a lot of national attention. This is going to be just a little con controversial, I suspect. If you spare the rod, do you really spoil the child? A uh, local policeman says yes. Please welcome police detective and author of the book, No Fear, Robert Surgeoner, to the show. Robert, real quick, I'm almost done. I want, I'm sorry, I got you all the way here and didn't get a chance to talk to you. According to my next guest, instilling fear is the right thing to do. Robert Surgeoner is a father of five, a juvenile crime detective, and now an author of the book, No Fear. This story is bound to have parents talking. Should you spank your children or not? 
This Berea detective says absolutely, and he's written a book on spanking and corporal punishment. We also want to bring in Detective Robert Surgenor. Surgenor heads the juvenile crime unit at the Berea, Ohio Police Department. He joins us from our Cleveland affiliate, WKYC. Detective, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Our next guests certainly think so. Robert and Nancy Surgener join us now from Cleveland, Ohio. Joining us from Cleveland tonight is retired detective Robert Surgenor, who wrote about corporal punishment in his book, No Fear. Welcome to you both. So, to all of my brothers and sisters in blue out there who think it's your job to hold the public's hand, there are plenty of other violations out there that can harm the innocent. It's not the government's job to protect people against themselves. And don't give me the lame excuse that if people don't wear their seatbelts, it causes an increase in insurance cost, and that hurts us all. No, it doesn't. If Willie Window Licker doesn't want to wear a seatbelt, and you have to pry his twisted body from around the telephone pole, just think, he won't ever grow old. He won't be getting arthritis, or diabetes, or heart disease, or any other medical malady old people get. Think how much in medical costs the insurance company will save. Not wearing seatbelts will cause insurance costs to go down. So here's what I have to say about click it or ticket. Stick it. This has been a public service announcement on behalf of 95% of all retired police officers who are sick and tired of the new politically correct attitude being adopted by departments all over the country. It is not endorsed by the Fraternal Order of Police or the National Police Chiefs Association, both of which have lost their way trying to make the public happy instead of supporting their officers. The views expressed in this video are not the views of all police officers, but should be.